So my friend asked me, should a woman be the president of the United States of America? And I had to look around because I was kind of scared. I know that right now in this climate, a man cannot have an honest opinion because we're governing a nation by feelings. And I have a whole lot of feelings. So before I start talking about Kamala, I want to talk about my mama. My mama was my hero, the biggest person in my life up until about 11 or 12. What happens at 11 or 12 years old? That testosterone hits, them nuts drop. And then all of a sudden when my mom told me to do something, I looked at her and when I looked at her, I was looking at her in her face, like in her eyes. I was probably looking at the top of her head. And I was like, hold on mama, I better do what? And if I don't, you're gonna do what? And my mom looked at me and she kind of like, she kind of, she gauged the situation, and she looked at me with the most coolest look in the whole entire world. She didn't get mad. She didn't get angry. She said, if you don't do what I told you to do right now, I'm going to tell your daddy. And I said, oh, whoa, whoa, wait, mama, mama, please, please don't tell daddy. Please don't tell daddy. Now we have to examine this exchange. Why did I feel that way? Because my mom couldn't force me to do anything. At 12 years old, I had the thought in my brain. I said, mama, make me. Mama, make me do something. And the moment I, the moment I had that thought, I didn't have to say it because that was so disrespectful. She knew I got back up. Once your daddy gets home, tell him to make you because my dad was much bigger than me, much stronger than me. Big old biceps. My daddy probably had about 17, 18 inch biceps because he's a hard working man. My father grew up differently. I'm going to tell you about my father just a little bit. My dad grew up in the country, and when he was growing up, they didn't have running water. So my dad had to go get water from the age of probably like 8, 9, 10, carrying big five-gallon buckets, one in each hand. My dad was a baby Popeye, and so his forearms look different. His fingers look different. The build of him as a man is different. There are physical differences between my mother and my father. Is that so crazy for me to say that? Hell yeah, it is. Because in the political climate, when a person asks me, should a woman be the president? For me to give an honest answer, you look at me like I'm crazy. So let me talk. So when I talk about Kamala, I'm talking about my mama. Do we want Kamala? I don't, Kamala's not my mama. And so at no point in time can she ever call for backup and say, make him do this. That's not going to happen now. If we're going to have a woman run for president, which is the specific question that we're asking, men have a domination of force around the world. And when I say men in general, I'm a man who's done very hard jobs in my life. I've worked in the steel industry, rebar very specifically. Rebar comes in 40 foot long to 60 foot long, and it's extremely heavy. We're talking about tons. I was moving 100 tons of steel a week. And guess what? That was not with the assistance of any woman. There was no woman that could help me. A matter of fact, me, I have a problem with the, project, the professional managerial class. That means that when a person walks into the warehouse and they only have a college degree, but they have no know-how on how to do the job, they have no strength on how to do the job, I'm doing the labor, but you have ideas, and your ideas means that I gotta work harder, I have no respect for that. If you can't do the thing that I'm doing, then please get away from me as fast as possible. Now, that's, that's just one job. My life, as a man, I've had to do hard things my entire life. When I was 18 years old, I went to the United States military, and my job was to lift bombs that weigh between 500 pounds to 3,000 pounds. Guess what? When a woman tried to work with me, it made my life extremely difficult because she didn't do it. Men have a domination on force, and when I go to the military very specifically, the President of the United States of America is the commander-in-chief of the most powerful military in the entire world. The military is based on force. And just tell me what woman walks into a room with other world leaders and can tell any man, you better, because her only backup is the men behind her. Because as men, we know that we had to go through things growing up. From the age, as soon as you're a little kid, if you have a toy and there's another little boy and he likes your toy, you better put your dukes up and deal with this child to make sure that you maintain your possessions. It doesn't change when you grow up. We just only get bigger. Our muscles only get bigger. And guess what? Dear women, your muscles don't get bigger. Your force doesn't improve. The only force that you have is to manipulate men into believing that we have the same physical force when we don't. Dear men, you don't have to be manipulated into believing something that you don't believe. You don't have to vote for a woman just because she's a woman. What's the definition of misogyny? 
Misogyny is the hatred of women, believing that women can't do what they were designed to do. I think every woman can do what she was designed to do. But when I say it, when I say it, you say, that's misogynistic. What's misogynistic about having babies? What's misogynistic about being a mother? Doing the thing that God created you to do is wrong. Let's continue to talk about the military. When Ukraine went to war with Russia, guess what happened? Every man, I don't care if you dressed as a woman, I don't care if you identified as a woman, they identified you as a warrior, they gave you a weapon and put your ass on the front line and said, we got to go and fight Russia. Dear America, we're in a global competition with other nations and the people who are going to defend this great nation are men, are men. I actually believe that every service person should have the right to say what they will die and not die for. That's my thinking. And so to have that, there has to be force. So when a person walks in the room and tells me what I have to do, I have to have the ability to say, or what? What are you going to do? And your response can't be that I'm going to have someone else make you do it. No man in America respects that. No woman in America respects that. Every mother in the world, because I'm talking about mama when we started off, I was talking about mama and Kamala. What are the benefits of Kamala being the president? Now, Kamala's not even a mama. She's a mama to someone else's children. Hell yeah, but tell me, quiz for you right now. What, what is Kamala's husband's name? Doug Emhoff. Doug Emhoff is Kamala's husband's name. Now, in journal, let's take a poll right now. Men and women, raise your hand, get in the comment section, and tell me what you believe and what you don't believe. Do you believe that when you get married that a woman should take a man's name? Do you believe in marriage? Do you believe in the institution of family? Do you believe in God, man, woman, child? The hierarchy that says that when something goes wrong or when something's hard, the man is supposed to pray to God. God gives him instruction. The man has to go and do what needs to be done. And the woman is supposed to be as supportive as possible because she knows that that man has to go get to it and she has to take care of these babies and this is the institution that's created humanity all the way up to, up to this point. And so when I said, dear women, as soon as you got to 9, 10, 11, 12, it wasn't testosterone, but it was your hormones. It was estrogen. And you walked into the room and now you and your mama is the same height. Now y'all are physically developed the same way. You look at your mama like, mama, you going to make me? And every mama in the world, you know when your daughter get big headed, you got a choice. You can either try to go down the route of being her friend or you can bust upside her head and say, girl, I told you to do this. And if she doesn't, you can't go tell daddy because daddy, what's he going to do? He's supposed to take physical force and swat the girl on her fanny and say, you better behave and listen to your mama. No, mama has to deal with that. And there are millions of women in America right now who know that they need a man for their protection. And so they're looking at Kamala Harris and say, you can't protect me, Kamala. Are they misogynistic? Or are they realistic? Can America come back to truth? Truth will define this nation by accepting our physical reality. There are men, there are women. Men have physical force, women have babies. Anything outside of that is crazy. Stop being crazy. Be the greatest American alive. Save this country. When you go vote, men, vote for your tangible reality. Don't vote for your feelings. Don't vote for your thoughts. Vote for power.